Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basso, and welcome back to 6000 and Below, where I take a look at games on BoardGameGeek, a fantastic database for board games that are ranked 6,000 or less. I'm going through them 100 at a time and telling you about them and saying, hey, is this game, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, but let's talk about them because these games don't get talked about a lot. Today we're finishing up the 6,000s by starting at 6,901. Um, and uh, then we'll be going through to 7,000. Um, the first game on here, Infiltrators, is a cooperatively pinpoint things. This is a game from Broadway Toys, and I think, I think this one is actually sitting on our shelf to review. I don't think we've reviewed it yet, but I remember seeing this one thinking, huh, I'll have to give this one a whirl. Bucket King 3D. So Bucket King is... Uh, original little game about placing cards with buckets on top. Here you have a 3D matching thing. You're playing cards, placing buckets on top of each other. It's it's fine. It's almost there. Not quite what I'm looking for. Here we have the Assassin's Creed Valhalla Dice game, or Log. I've never played that. Cairo with a K. I haven't played that, but I have played Age of Towers. Man, this one makes me sad. I really want it to like Age of Towers here. Um, as you build different towers, kind of like a tower defense style game. Tower defense is a hard thing to do in a board game. And this, while this has gorgeous pieces, the game itself isn't really that good. Don Pepe. Terminus is a brand new game that I have not yet ranked because I've only played it once. This is from Inside Up Games. But I'll tell you this. This is a game. We're talking Lacerda weight. There is some heavy stuff going on in this game, which is why I haven't rated it yet, because I want to play it some more to see my thoughts on it. Talisman Legendary Tales. So this is kind of an intriguing game. This is a from Talisman, but this is more like the kids' version of Talisman. You're going to be moving around on a board, and you can play with adults, pulling different tokens from a bag to fight things. The, num the amount of strategy this has compared to Talisman is like a hundredfold. It's way better than Talisman. I still don't think it's great, though. Penny Black. This is a game I enjoyed because it's about collecting stamps. Um, and it's very simple. You're placing the stamps in these really nice books. The stamps themselves are plastic. It's just a great production. This is a great game for people who don't play many games. I very much recommend, if you like stamps or know someone who likes stamps, to definitely check this one out. Destination X, you're asking geography games to figure out where a spy is hiding, and it sounds great, it is not. Man, I thought this would be a fun game, I didn't enjoy it. Five out of 10. Moving on, Cthulhu, a deck building game. Oh, here's Super Munchkin. Look how many ratings that has, 2,868. Risk Starcraft Collector's Edition, I've not played that, but I have played Star Trek Away Missions. Um, this game, which Joey liked, I think, a little better than me, I played this one multiple times to see what I'm missing. It is a group of, you know, you're either the Federation or you're the Romulans or the Klingons, whatever it might be, or the, the Borg, I think, come in the original game. You have a couple actions, and that's it. It feels like you do nothing in this game. I really dislike this one, and I was really hoping to enjoy it. All right, moving down to Greedy Kingdoms. So Greedy Kingdoms is a very fun um, two-player game that you probably haven't heard of. It originally came out in Japan, and AEG made a little game of this. But it's kind of like a very advanced rock, paper, scissors style game, and I really like it. I think there's a lot of fun. If you ever find this one, this is a great little light two-player game. Not a lot of ratings, but I think it's fun. Okay, here's Warhammer, the Game of Fantasy Battle, 6th edition. That's pretty low rated for that. But then again, BGG tends to be negative towards that. Tapeworm. Didn't I play Tapeworm? Well, I shouldn't say didn't. I know I played Tapeworm. Huh. I never rated it. Well, here, I'll help you guys out. It's a 5. Tapeworm is not great. It is just a game where you're putting down worms next to other worms. It's a funny theme. Ha, ha, ha. But that's about it. All right, Brilliance and The Batman Who Laughs Rising. So these are two very different games. Brilliance, um, this is a game in which you have ants and you're running around a board, you're digging holes, collecting things. It's a pretty good game. It's not great, but it's good. 
But why is this notable? Because the designer, Maxime Tardif, he's best known for Earth. I mean, he made Diver City and Brilliance, and those games did not go very far. But then Earth blew the doors down. So it's always, I always find it fascinating to go back and look at their first uh, game. The Batman Who Laughs Rising is another game based on the Thanos Rising system. This one's based on the very dark, dark comic Batman Who Laughs, where essentially Batman is Joker type situation. You don't want to know more than that. But it's basically the same as Thanos Rising. So I like it. It's a fine game. Hammer Time. We played this one live here in the Dice Tower before. This is a Hobbit game in which you basically are hitting the side of the box and trying to knock off a certain number of gems, but you don't want to knock off too many. That's the whole concept of the game, but it works well with kids, works well with adults. Hammer Time. Now let's see, here's a Werewolf of Miller's Howl. That's one of the more well-known werewolf variants. Here's an Unlock. I not played this one, a Temple of Ra. Hmm. Let's see, Gem, this is one of the, oh wait, I have played Gem. This is one of the uh, games from Pack of Games. Well, I could better rate that one then. I like this one, it's a seven. Gem is good. Cosmic Wimp Out, a lot of people, this came out in 1975. Never played this Copwell game, but it's a push your luck style game with these cool dice. So there's a good chance that many of you watching have played this game before. Look, a thousand ratings here. Shazam! Wisdom of Solomon. Wait, did I not play the Wisdom of Solomon? Am I thinking of a different game? Oh, I played the Kingdom of Solomon, which I gave a 6 to. And I would probably give a lower score to that now, maybe. But this one has been done by Philip DuBarry. Huh. Interesting. All right. We have City Hall. We have a bunch of games here, so let's take a look at each of these. So City Hall is a game from Michael Keller, Tasty Minstrel Games. This is one I did not enjoy. You're building a city here. It felt kind of the decisions that we made were just kind of there. I didn't feel any real good choices. Apollo, a game inspired by the NASA moon missions, is a cooperative game where one person has all this information behind there and they're telling the other players, they're working, you're working back and forth to get the, the mission to the moon. I like this. They made a roll and write similar to this, but I thought this was better. Sanctuary Endangered Species is another one of those hidden gems that if you find it, it's worth checking out. From a great cover um, to basically you're building your own sanctuary in front of you. There's a lot of good decisions in this game. Uh, did I get this game an eight? It's a solid game. But I think it's, it's lower on this list because it just never got out there. A lot of people never heard of it. Moving along, we have Drawn to Adventure and Freaky Frogs from Outer Space. Drawn to Adventure, you are... Oh, this is, a, this is a mini game that came in one of the... It came with one of the bigger games uh, from the uh, Final Frontier. And you can see the, the Micho's artwork and stuff, but eh, it was just okay at best. Freaky Frogs Matter Space is Friedman Fries's pinball game. And I'll tell you what, it definitely has the feel of pinball. It's crazy how he got the feel of pinball into just playing a bunch of cards. That being said, I don't know why I would play this game over, say, playing pinball. It just, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know how else to ex explain it than that. What else we got on here? Firepower, Zuwabu. Oh, here's a game I played, Dragons. Very unimaginatively titled, but you're playing dragons and trying to capture, you are dragons, I'm sorry, and you are capturing different cards. This is a Bruno Faduti game. When did dragons come out? 2018. Yeah, well, maybe Matago shouldn't have called it dragons. Travel blog? <laughs> I'm gonna look at this one. You are going to beat your fellow... Oh, this is from CGE. Huh. I've never played this one, and I suspect I won't. But that's interesting. All right. We got Mesozoic. I remember this one a lot. Um, this one I thought would be cool because you have these cards, and you're building like a, a zoo in front of you with these different cards. And, oh, it's, it's really cool. It's just not... It's, it's, it's an okay game, which is why I gave it a six. Seven Days of Westerplot is a cooperative game 
where you, the, the German battleship is bombarding the Polish people and you're working together to stop the, the Germans from invading. It's not a war game. It's a cooperative game with a very specific theme, but I thought it was a pretty neat one. Uh, what else we got here? Testifier, Bull Run 1861, and Adventure Mart. Did not like either of these, unfortunately. This one here is a little war game that I thought was just too basic. Cool miniatures on this one. Was there miniatures in the base game? No, they were all these cardboard things. It was just very boring. Adventure Mart, I really wanted to like this game, but it just, it was so lucky that I just couldn't really enjoy it. I just didn't find it to be fun. I like the idea of running a store for adventurers, but nope, didn't work. Moving down here, we have, don't tread on me, the American Revolution Solitaire board game. It's very specific. Uh, Ninja Dice. Oh, there's Digimon. That's funny. Digimon, the card game, is ranked pretty low here, actually. Huh. Anyway, Ninja Dice is just a quick game. I've always liked the packaging for Ninja Dice. It comes in, you can see the uh, there, that little, let me see if I can find it, a picture. Yeah, it comes in this little cushy uh, box where you're rolling these dice. It's just a fun, light dice game. Rabbids and Robots, that's kind of an interesting name here. Penny Lane. Here we have Break the Cube. So break the cube, be the first person to break your opponent's cube. So this is kind of a weird game. I like it, but you are doing deduction. Your opponent is building their blocks in some sort of fashion, and then you are placing, you're asking them questions and then figuring out their solution before anyone else figures out another solution. That's kind of the whole game. The Brigade. I like the Brigade. The Brigade is a game about putting out fires in a fantasy world. And that's pretty much the game, but it is a fun one. It's a, it's a, it's a cooperative one. Well, that looks way cooler than the game. But it has all these different pieces. You're going around. You have special abilities based on fantasy races and things like that. And whoever's the best at fighting off the fire becomes the new fire chief. I'm incorrect. This is not a cooperative game. You're all putting out fire together, but I'm trying to put out fire better than you. City Builder. This is another inside-up game. This one got very little fanfare. Partially, I think, because it doesn't look great. It has this idea of placing these tiles down, building out the city, so that you can put out these various building sizes. It's actually a pretty good game. It just doesn't look as good as other games. But there's a lot of interesting things about it. Moving down here, we have three sixes to end this one out here. We have Streams. So Streams is a, a, um, a roll and write or a draw and write game. It is essentially bingo the roll and write. That's the best way. You're just writing numbers along this thing, trying to write higher numbers, but eventually you have to start over again. Dark Horse is one of the first Kickstarters. I remember this because I did a preview for this. And I believe, yep, there I am, the preacher. That's my character there. And this one, there's a lot of good things about it. I like the idea of the Western theme, but it's just one of those early Kickstarters that hasn't aged as well. That's all. And Farmageddon. Uh, this is from 5th Street Games, and this is just a silly game about having different... You're planting things, but it's kind of like a, you're planting crops in front of you, but it has a very strong take-that feel. So there you go, folks. We made it to 7,000. I think in this particular one, my game of this page... Ooh, this is a tough one. I'm going to go with Greedy Kingdoms. I think Greedy Kingdoms is pretty solid, and that is the one I would recommend. But what about you? Which game here do you think is the best in this group of 100? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassin. You've been watching 6,000 Games Better Than These on the Dice Tower. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you want to learn more about us? Communicate with us. We have a Facebook group. We have a Discord channel. Lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our Linktree link below. So just click that and it will take you and you can communicate with us on Facebook. Join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell.